Hi, welcome to Pyrography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to create the Candy Canes Christmas postcard. This is one of my favorite Christmas postcards I've done so far. It looks nice, it isn't overly complicated, and it makes a great holiday gift or a decoration. My website has a free pattern and a written tutorial for this project. The written tutorial covers some basic items to get the project ready for burning, like prepping the wood and transferring the pattern. I'm not going to cover those here. Instead, we will start after the trace lines have been burned in. This is how the artwork looks so far. We will first work on the candy canes by marking the highlights and edging them. For the first part of this step, you'll need a white charcoal pencil. I emphasize that it must be a charcoal pencil and not a colored pencil. Colored pencils contain wax that will melt and char when heated with the pen tip. Good luck removing it. The charcoal, on the other hand, resists the heat and erases even after it gets heated. The other thing you'll need is a shader pen tip. Well, let's get to work. Use white charcoal pencil to draw the light reflection line along the left or top candy cane. Draw the line slightly off center so it's a little closer to the right edge of the candy cane. Make sure to keep the line on the same side of the candy cane when working on the hook area. The charcoal line visually marks our no burn zone and I'll explain its purpose in greater detail later in the tutorial. Draw the same white charcoal line on the right or lower candy cane. Again, keep it closer to the right edge of the candy cane. This is how the artwork looks so far. Edge the candy cane by burning a line along the outer edges of it. Keep the end of the pen tip right on the edge of the candy cane. Keep the rest of the pen tip so it's angled over the candy cane. This is optimal pen tip position and it ensures you can only burn on the candy cane. Optimal pen tip position also keeps the edges of the candy canes nice, clean, and crisp. Rotate the wood as needed to keep the pin tip in optimal position as you burn. This is how the artwork looks so far. Before we start burning, I need to explain a couple of things. First, the majority of the artwork in this project was created using pull-away strokes, but I also use some uniform strokes. I have a short video that demonstrates them, so let's watch that. Start the pull-away stroke on the line or the edge of the object. Pull the pin tip away from the line. New strokes should be touching or even slightly overlapping the previous stroke. Pull-away strokes produce a gradient patch of color that starts dark and fades at the end of the stroke. Uniform strokes are created by burning a line that has the same color throughout the entire stroke. New strokes should be touching or even slightly overlapping the previous stroke. Uniform strokes produce a solid patch of color with little to no color variation. Now that we have an understanding of uniform and pull away strokes, let's burn in the candy canes. The candy canes have a very rounded or 3D look to them. This was accomplished by shading along the sides up to the white charcoal line. I mostly used pull away strokes during this step, but occasionally I used the uniform. After I give the candy canes their 3D look, I erase the charcoal and use a writer pen tip to burn in the decorative dots. Well, let's get to work. Use pull away strokes to burn the red stripes on the candy cane so they are dark tan in color. Start the stroke on the outer edge of the candy cane 
and pull it towards the white charcoal line. Lift the pen tip up and away before reaching the white line as the line represents the no burn zone. The cane should be a little darker near the outer edge. The back and forth motion I am currently doing are rapid uniform strokes. I use them to help fill in the section. Now about the no burn zone. Unburned or pale spots appear closer or elevated from the surrounding area, whereas dark spots seem further away or recessed into the background. The white charcoal line marks the unburned spot, so it will appear to be the highest area on the candy canes. Use the razor edge of the shader to darkly burn on the candy canes right under the bow to represent cast shadows from the bow. Resume burning in the red stripes along the candy cane. Right now we are only working on the stripes. The decorative dots will get burned in later. When you burn in the white stripes on the candy cane, burn them so they are light tan in color. This can be done without adjusting the heat setting on your burner by moving your hand faster like I am doing in the video. Rotate the wood as needed while you work. You should always be able to see the end of your pin tip and the edge of the candy cane. Keeping both in sight helps make sure you don't accidentally burn past the edge of the candy cane. As I mentioned before, the white charcoal line is the no burn zone. It is covering or protecting the highlight while the candy cane is being burned in. When we are done, and the charcoal is erased, the unburned line will be the lightest or the pellest part on the candy cane, making it appear elevated or the top of the candy cane. The darkest area on the candy cane is found along the outer edges, so this will make the edges seem recessed or further away from the top. The combination of a pell line and darker sides is what creates the 3D or rounded illusion that the candy canes have. This is how the artwork looks so far. Burn in the stripes on the right or lower candy cane just like the left one. The red stripes should be dark tan in color, the white stripes burn to a light tan color, and the edges of the candy cane should be the darkest area on the candy cane. Just like the first candy cane, the white charcoal line is the no burn zone. Thoroughly rub over the white charcoal lines with an eraser. I'm using a kneadable eraser, but any eraser for pencil will work. Switch to a writer pen tip and burn in the decorative dots on both candy canes. Ignore the small segments of the bow that has been burned in. I will cover that a little later in the tutorial. Try to burn the dots a little lighter on the highlight or the unburned line on the candy canes. As you watch the decorative dots being burned in, you will occasionally see me use the writer pen tip to burn along the outer edges of the candy cane. I'm doing that to darken up the edges in a few places that didn't seem quite dark enough to me.
This is how the artwork looks so far. As you can see, it wasn't very difficult to create a 3D look on the candy canes. The next thing we will work on is the bow. This is very similar to the candy canes in that we will use pull away and uniform strokes to create them. Well, let's get to work. Burn a dark line along the bottom of the two middle loops of ribbon on the bow. Burn a dark line under the loop of ribbon that is over the left tail. Burn a dark line along the edge of the bend on the left tail. Next, fill in the small underside of the ribbon with pull-away strokes. Start the stroke on the right and pull it toward the left. Burn the small underside of ribbon on the left tail the same as the right. With the top segment of ribbon on the left tail, fill it with pull-away strokes that start right next to the loop of ribbon. Pull the strokes towards the left edge, but stop near the three-quarter mark. Rotate the board and burn really short pull-away strokes along the left edge. Pull the stroke towards the bow loops, but make the stroke about 1 quarter or 0.64 centimeters long. Fill in the rest of the ribbon segment with uniform strokes. Burn the lower ribbon tail segment in a similar fashion using pull away and uniform strokes. Remember that the pull away strokes start on the edges or the darkest part of the ribbon and get pulled towards the lightest part of the ribbon. In this case, the lightest part is the slight curve a short distance from the bend in the tail. Uniform strokes are used to give the rest of the bow color. Now it took me reburning several times before I had the color built up and smooth looking. With the lower left loop, darkly burn along the crease mark lines. Next, burn a dark line on all of the loops along the left edge of the bow center to represent cast shadows. Extend the shadow on the lower left loop. Then fill in the loop using uniform and pull away strokes. Color the loop so that both ends are darker than the middle. Make the pull-away strokes along the outer or left edge of the loop around 1 quarter or 0.6 centimeters long. Burn darkly along the upper edge of the loop just below the loop above it. This will give the look of a shadow being cast onto the lower loop. Darkly burn the candy cane along the edge of the lower loop to represent the cast shadows found there. On the next loop, darkly burn in the crease lines and along the bottom edge of the loop above it. Then, use a combination of pull-away and uniform strokes to fill in the loop. Keep the pull-away strokes along the end of the loop the same length as the lowest loop. Mm -hmm. 
With the second loop from the top, burn in the crease lines. This loop doesn't have any cast shadows from other loops on it, so we don't have to worry about that. After the crease lines are burned in, then burn the rest of the loop using pull away and uniform strokes. Again, keep the pull away strokes along the end of the loop the same length as the other two loops. With the top loop, burn in the creases, and then fill it in just like the other three loops that we burned. Here's how the artwork looks at this point. With the center of the bow, darkly burn in the crease lines along the bottom. Next, burn pull away strokes along the top and bottom of the bow center. Then, Fill in the center with uniform strokes. With the loops on the right side of the bow, I burn them as a group. So first, I burned in the cast shadows. Then, I burned in the creases. After that, I filled in the loops using pull away and uniform strokes. You can burn the loops the same way, or you can burn them individually like we did with the loops on the left side. Both ways work, so it's a matter of what you prefer. The right tail was handled the same as the left tail. Use pull away strokes along the edges and uniform strokes to fill in the rest of the ribbon with color. Along the right edge of the top segment of ribbon on the tail has pull away strokes that are only 1 quarter inch or 0.64 centimeters long. The lightest or pellest area on the lower ribbon segment is along the slight curve located a short distance to the right of the bends in the ribbon. Here is the artwork so far. The last thing we need to burn are the holly leaves. Again, we will use pull away strokes to create their look. I burned in the first few leaves and then started on the sixth leaf and discovered a new look that I liked. So I burned the remaining leaves that way. I'm going to show and explain those last leaves. Ignore the others that are already burned in. Well, let's get to work. First, burn a dark vein line down the center of the leaf. Next, burn a thick dark line along the outer edges of the leaf. At each point on the leaf, Burn a curved dark line that nearly reaches the center vein. Then burn pull away strokes that start on the center vein line and pull them towards the outer edges of the leaf. Mm -hmm. 
rotate the board and burn pull away strokes that start on the outer edges of the leaf and pull them towards the center vein line. So just like the first example, burn a dark vein down the center of the leaf, burn thick dark lines along the outer edges of the leaf, burn a line from each point on the leaf towards the center vein, and then fill in the rest of the leaf with pull away strokes. Once again, burn a dark vein line down the center of the leaf, burn thick dark lines along the outer edges of the leaf, and at each point on the leaf, burn a curved dark line that nearly reaches that center vein. Then burn pull away strokes that either start from the center vein and go towards the edges, or the stroke starts on the edges and goes towards the center of the leaf. We are all done. I hope you enjoyed this project and that I explained things clearly. As I said, this is one of my favorite Christmas postcards because I love how the dark holly frames the candy canes and the bow. In the remarks below, I've provided a link to my website, Pyography Made Easy. The website has a written tutorial and a free pattern for this artwork. Well, I love hearing from you, so let me know what you think about this video. Before I leave, I'll answer a couple of common questions I get. I use a Colwood Super Pro 2. The artwork was burned on die-cut plywood and it took me four hours to complete it. Well, that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.